Hey, thanks for checking out this week's video. So you may have noticed that I'm a little bit late in posting, in fact I think I'm a week late. I'm sorry for that, there's no excuses really, just life. Some of you may know that I'm preparing for a local exhibition, so I've temporarily been cutting back on my voiceovers, but I fancied a bit of a catch up this week. So for last week's video, I ended up doing a retake because originally I tried to do the drawing too small and I wasn't really that keen on the outcome. I still really like the idea of doing something small though, so I decided to have another go at it and especially as I found these really cute little small wooden panels. I'm using a mechanical pencil, a flat brush, a pencil eraser brush, a putty eraser, some black pencils that I'll talk a bit more about later and then some white gouache for the highlights and gold watercolour to embellish. I did also use some acrylic gold to finish off the panel at the end. As always, you can find all the materials I use in the description box below. At the start of the video, you see I initially tried to do the drawing directly onto the wood. I thought it could have been a fun idea, but the grain of the wood obviously didn't take too well to me smudging the graphite. I do think I could have worked with it and maybe gotten better results, but I'll be honest, it wasn't quite what I was going for anyway. The wood is really light and doesn't have that wooden look to it, you know, like for the lines and all those knots and what have you, so I might as well have just been working on paper anyway, so that's what I did. After erasing what I could of the drawing, I covered it with Mod Podge, which is just a common sort of craft glue, and then I stuck on my favourite hot press watercolour paper, and just to be sure that it was stuck down really well. I put the box I use for storing all my oil paints on top as it's pretty heavy. Then after that I just carefully cut off the excess paper with a craft knife and I decided to gently sand the edges of the paper just so it would align a bit more with the wooden panel and look more sort of together. And yes, there is my cat again forever obsessed with scratchy sounds. Those that haven't seen me do the smudgy graphite technique before, I do give some tips in my gouache elf time lapse. But generally it's just a case of building up values very slowly by layering very gently, especially if you're working in graphite as it can get really shiny if you add too much pressure. The title I've given this piece is Hidden, it's quite an obvious one I guess. The exhibition I'm doing is based on the theme Secret World, so it's about all these elves and fairies and nymphs etc being a part of what I guess is almost a different world, but it's actually the same one as ours, we just don't see them or pay enough attention to see them. So I really like the idea of something hiding in the flowers keeping watch. It's a simple piece and you'll see I keep the flowers fairly stylized too. So from here it's just a case of building up those darker values. I'm sure my mechanical pencil is only a HB lead so it was quite tough getting the darker areas without it getting shiny. I felt like it took forever to build up those layers. And I still did end up with a couple of shiny parts here and there. I think it was where the lips part and maybe the outer eyelashes. Eventually I swapped to some different darker pencils which are made with a higher proportion of carbon that is supposed to give you really matte and jet black results which they do do. However it's kind of like charcoal in the sense that they're not completely erasable. You can lighten them but you can't completely get rid of that and that to me just <laughs> scares me a bit I'll be honest. I like the possibility of being able to completely erase any mistakes I make so then I can be bolder and try more things. But if I know that I can't completely erase it, then it means I have to just take my time and think it through a bit more. But they turned out really good actually. I used them for, you see them mostly around the flowers because I kept the flowers really stylized. I wanted it to almost look like it was sort of inked. So I used it there and then like in the very dark areas of the portrait with the eyelashes and probably the pupils and maybe the inner corner of the eye where the lips meet too and perhaps the nostrils it, just, it really helped to push those really dark areas without having to worry about it getting super shiny. So that pretty much covers it. Um, at the end you'll see me embellish the flowers with some gold watercolour I didn't really have a huge plan for how I was going to use it, I just thought I thought if I did the whole flowers it would just be complete overkill and it might look a bit silly so I thought I'll try and go for the tips of the petals and just sort of take it from there and see how it went. I'm not 100% keen on the outcome, I do like it but I do think I could have done better with the, the gold watercolour but you know me, I love to embellish with the shiny things. I also do paint the outside edges of the panel with some gold. I ended up using gold acrylic paint that I bought in specially. I was quite annoyed at myself actually because I have um, a gold spray paint that I've been dying to use and I had mounted the paper for this onto the panel and I'd already started uh, doing the drawing and then I was like, oh, I could have sprayed the panel first and then put the paper on top. 
For a while I was trying to think, like convince myself that I could probably still get away with like if I put something really heavy on top of the panel and have the artwork face down. It's like maybe I could get away with still spray painting the side and it wouldn't go over the edge. So I, I considered it for a while and I thought no. I can't risk it so I bought in some acrylic gold paint but then the acrylic gold paint didn't quite match the exact same I don't know it was warmer than the watercolour gold you'll see me use so I do sort of go over it a little bit in the end but I, I don't think I recorded that part just in case I messed it up I didn't it's fine but um, <laughs> I thought maybe you guys would be getting bored of it by now anyway I liked this sort of concept so much that I bought a few more panels. I'm just waiting for them to arrive and I'll probably do like a series of some other creatures hiding in like foliage and flowers and things. I don't know, I think I'll make it a little series. And that about wraps it up. I hope you've all been keeping well and that you've enjoyed this video. If you did like it, do give me a like and if you want to see more then do hit that subscribe button as it really helps me out. Also, I'm getting really close to a thousand subscribers, <laughs> I'm dead excited. It's like probably quite a small number to most people, but it means so much to me. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. I'm going to do a giveaway. I was hoping to do a giveaway for when I hit the 1000 subscribers, but I think I'm still going to be busy with the exhibition. So it's going to be celebrating 1000 subscribers. It might just be a bit later, but there'll be some original art and hopefully some art goodies as well. Oh, and also I really struggled for what to talk about in this. Normally I managed to ramble on for ages, but I just didn't feel like I had a topic and I didn't really want to force anything. But if anyone has any questions or any sort of general topics they would like to hear any thoughts on or anything, let me know in the comments and I'll probably make like a, a compilation list of topics for future videos that I can pick from. And I think that's about it. So until next time, bye.